How many of you used to watch the Netflix special Breaking Bad? I used to OD on that. There was this one scene where he takes her to the storage unit and he rolls up the door and there is like, literally the floor is covered in a three to four foot stack high of money. And she, instead of like, wow, wow, you did a great thing. Oh, wow, look at all this money. She said, how much is enough? How big does this pile have to be? At that moment, I was thinking, where is the excitement? This is one of the things for my hard charging entrepreneurs. The people around you are going to try to keep you normal because the question is how much is enough and there is a certain limit because like i said your limit is much higher than their limit because they're happy working a regular job they're happy scraping pennies together they're happy living a normal life and you want more for yourself you will find out as you get on this journey that the people that you can talk to on a deep intimate level are just gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller because they're trying to keep you normal. And it's not like it's insidious or these people are evil or anything like that. It's just, this is all they know. So they're gonna try to check your ambition at the door. I remember growing up in the South, you know, I remember talking to this old man and he was like, don't dream too big. And this is the worst thing you can tell a kid. You shouldn't tell a kid don't dream too big. You should tell kids to dream big and to work hard and to have focus. And I was called high-minded. I was talked about, I, you know, it was just like, cause I, I just knew that there was more in the world than that small pet patch of place in Alabama. Th this is one of the reasons that I did not go into coal mines or work in the steel plant because many of the people I graduated from with high school, that's extract the street. They went straight up in there. And I wasn't going to the coal mines. Call me a punk if you want to, but I remember newscast after newscast after newscast. 13 miners trapped in the cave in, 24 miners. There were men in my neighborhood who worked in the mine who were missing fingers and stuff due to industrial accidents. I was like, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. I'm not going to the steel plant. I'm just not doing this. If you are hard charging, if you have big dreams, you have big goals, normal people are going to try to check your ambition. They're going to like, they're going to be negative. They're not gonna support you. And this is why you have to have your own internal cheerleader. Someone just said something like, uh, someone that was dating and she's actually, she's been to the house and she was like, you live in this big old house by yourself? It's like, absolutely. The next one's probably gonna be bigger. And she just looked at me. One of the things is as a person, society, your friends, your family, they will all place limits on you. You should not place limits on yourself because there's 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 like a, a social agenda to place limits on you, to keep you in check, to keep you where you are. And I've not placed any limits on myself because I remember when I was looking at this house, if y'all listened to me, I, I got this house because I had a shopping list. You know, long story short, I had two offices, which I may actually be getting one of them back in an industrial building, a commercial property, I just like, okay, I need X amount of space to do my YouTube thing. And I, I went looking for this house, big driveway, check, finished basement, check, a lot of rooms that I could turn into studios, check. So I got this house based upon a checklist versus, hey, it's just a big old house. It, that wasn't the thought process that went into getting this house. It was like, I'm gonna get this house for my business and actually getting this house, because uh, my other house was 3,500 uh, a month and this one in my office was almost 3,000 a month plus internet and all this other stuff. So I was shelling out close to 7,000 bucks a month for space and this space cost me only 3,500. So I am saving 35, that's how I look at it. It's like this big old house. And actually, you know, I'm thinking about moving to Midtown, like be like the Jeffersons moving on up, living in the high rise. But I'm thinking about keeping the house as an office because I could not get office space this big, I couldn't get it for 3,500, even in the pandemic, I just couldn't. So I'm just sitting there thinking, I'll just turn this into an office, have five employees running around here and use this as a filming studio. But that's just, you know, me thinking off the head because I haven't fully committed and I haven't checked out all my options. That's just an example that I did not place limits on myself because during this pandemic, it's been lovely. 
It's been great. It's been awesome. And I sit on two acres and I've been able to walk around in the yard and show myself. And, the, you know, if the deer were more friendly, I've been able to pet the deer. But you, you should never put limits on yourself. You should never limit yourself. Let's talk about the herd. The herd is the mass of humanity that lives in sameness. The herd is people who like having a car note. Having a car note is very normal to people. Having two very expensive paid off luxury vehicles in my garage, that's atypical. That's not normal. I have a video like, you gotta be financially strange. Cause see, they're, they're gonna conspire. It's almost like you're, you're leaving us. You're leaving the pack. We don't want you to lead the pack. We don't want you to be exceptional. We don't want you to be remarkable. We don't want you to be who you want to be. And one of the big things because that scene just stands out to me like, you know, any other person would have been proud, would have been like, this is awesome that you did this. No, she's like, how much is enough? It's enough when I say it's enough. Because once again, let's talk about how much is enough. If your goal is to work a 30 some thousand dollar a year job, elk out some kind of little pension and live on social security and live in a 1500 square foot house and drive a used Ford, if that's your goal in life, if that makes you happy, God bless you. You're content. You're enjoying yourself. I'm here to say that ain't enough for me. This ain't even close to enough. My next SUV was probably be the Lamborghini because uh, I've been doing some research on that. Part of the issue is that people don't realize that you can make yourself a king. It is fully possible for you to become a king. That's what I talk about with the corporate citizens and the holding company strategy. You can become a king. And I don't think that people are accustomed to having that much freedom and license because one of the things that happened during this pandemic, a lot of people got a taste of freedom. You know, these folks who get in their car, go to their job, spend 30 minutes to an hour commuting to their job one way, and then at the end of the day, come back home. And they had a ritual and this ritual got disturbed and it opened up Pandora's box because a few women that I've been dating who work from home, they were like, I like working from home. I was able to work out. I was able to hang out with my dog. I was able to have lunch. I was able to do so many things I could not do that I had to, uh, that I could not do when I was going to the office. And they are emotionally dissatisfied right now because they have had a taste of that freedom. Because, you know, for me, this pandemic, it, I've been working from home for, since 2009. It, 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 ain't, it ain't a thing. It, you know, it's just, it is what it is. It's probably not going to change, you know, anytime in the future. But people got a taste of that freedom. Look, I'm here to tell you, it's so addictive because I am accustomed to doing things in my own time. I'm accustomed to going to Target, the bank, and doing stuff in the middle of the day so I don't have to run in the crowds. I've not shopped with the sweaty masses. I don't, I don't do that, I don't do that. And one of the things I want you guys to understand is this could be your life too. If you're willing to go through the disengagement, because one of the things is I have friends who have jobs and I talk to them because you know some of these friends I've known for 20, 30 years and I talk to them about life and the family. I never talk about business. I never bring that up because they're not going to understand what I'm doing. They're just not, they're my, they're my old school friends. We get together, holidays, we chop it up, we have fun, but I never bring up business. I never bring up money. Funny story, I was over a friend's house recently and there was a little get together. And then somebody comes in and is like, who's driving my favorite car? I don't know this chick. And everybody's like, what are you talking about? You know, cause she's just like, who's driving that Porsche? And I raised my little hand. And the look that my friend cut me, it's like, you went out and got a Porsche? Yeah, I did. Cause see, my friend knows that I do well, but they don't know exactly how well I did. And that Porsche, and she went to the window and she looked at it and she's like, oh my God, that is a Porsche. And the, the, the chick who came in, she was like, please let me ride. Please, 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 please. So I took her around the block and everything. And it, it was just very interesting. There was a shift in how people started looking at me. It was a shift because, you know, I just went in. I didn't say I had, because, you know, I'm never the guy that's like, hey man, I just got a new car. I, I don't do that. And, you know, I just went in there doing my normal walk of life. And my friend, she was, um, she was like, so business is really good? I said, it's best as ever been. I'm making more money than I ever made in my life. She's like, oh. Okay, okay, okay. And then she said something that was very, very nice, kind, and supportive. 
I am so proud of you. I remember when you were struggling. I am so proud of you. And that that's the kind of thing, because see, the disengagement you, you go through is, because you can still keep your friends. There, you know, there, there's a notion that you gotta cut your friends. You, know, you don't have to cut your friends loose. You can just don't talk business with them. Don't talk money with them. It, it, it'll be fine because you're still who you were. They just don't know until they start to see certain signs and just be low key with it. Don't be like, you know, I'm doing all this other stuff because I talk money with my millionaire friends. I talk money with my business friends because they understand like my friend who owns a car wash that does like two million a year. We can sit down and talk about money and investments and stuff because he understands he's there. And he, my financial friends and my non-financial friends, I compartmentalize them. When I'm around my non-financial friends, I don't ever talk about what I do. I don't ever bring it up. I'm just like chilling, sitting there playing dominoes, drinking, having a good time, enjoying life. I never bring it up because I understand the herd isn't ready for all of that. The, the herd is where the herd is because the herd has been institutionalized. And when I say institutionalized from birth, you have been groomed to be a worker bee. You've been groomed to go out and get a job. You've never been groomed, because some people are groomed. Some people are groomed for greatness. Some people are groomed to be heroes and sheroes because they've had really good parents who know the game. But the average person, you were groomed to be a, a worker drone. You were groomed to get a job. You were groomed to give up four to five decades of your life for this exchange of money, of, of time for money. And that's normal. And anyone that hops out the box, we got a problem. It's like, wait, 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 wait. Who told you you could get out of that box? Get, get back in that box. Back in the box. And I remember I was dating this chick and she was funny because she was like, she actually said, who told you you were special? I said, I've crowned myself the special king of Cameron. And she kind of laughed it off. She had an issue with me in my life because she had a regular job, she went to work and she just noticed that my life was very dissimilar from hers. I was like, I didn't have those stresses. I didn't deal with traffic. And I always seen to have money. And this was a long time ago. This is when I was living in the apartment. She was, she was just like, you don't really seem to have normal people problems. Cause she was really astute. I'll give her that. Cause she, she did peep some of the game. And she's like, you don't have normal people problems, do you? I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, you never talk about bills. You never talk about stress. You never talk about struggles. And I said, I'm not struggling. And she says, that's kind of weird. It's like, what do you mean is weird? It's like everyone I know is struggling. I was like, you don't know enough people. And you know, we had this, this kind of somewhat combative relationship. I'm here to tell you that they're gonna try to check your ambition at the door. So number one, talk money with your financial friends, the people who are in your industry. This is like why I really enjoy going to conferences and doing stuff because I would meet people who were like me, who had my mentality, who were out chasing money, chasing their greatness. You know, I, I still have all of my old friends. I, I will say with Facebook, I got two Facebook pages. I got a Facebook page with all my high school friends and stuff on it. And I have a new page with people who know me from YouTube. I barely even sign into my old Facebook page because there's people who remember me in high school, remember me growing up poor. I just got tired of the little side snipes and the little comments and stuff, whatever I would post on my page because I had an integration of my new friends and my old friends and they were seeing like all my new friends were rich and they were like what what's going on with that and i was like so i actually spend the majority of my facebook time on my new facebook page which is probably like three four years old now um, my original page is god like 15 years old or something like that I, I compartmentalize because this is something you're gonna have to do like once again you do not have to cut all your old friends like i got a friend who's broke he, i've known him 30 years he's my dude and I just don't talk money. I don't bring it up. I just don't flex on him. I'm just like, we get together, we start talking about stuff we know about, common friends, and just keep it there. Keep it right there. I don't try to fix people. Cause see, once you become successful, please avoid this urge to go out and try to fix people because you, you've been on this path, you've done things, and you, you, you can actually look at people and like see where they're making mistakes. People who have met you on a certain level are not going to appreciate you pointing out flaws and shortcomings and where they can do better. Even with the 
best of intentions. Don't do it. Just leave it alone. Let them figure it out for themselves. Now, if they sit down and it's like, hey, what are you doing? And they ask you, that's different. But do not try to fix people. Leave them alone. Leave them where they are. Let them be. Let them be because they can get hostile. Uh, one of the things that has happened with this YouTube channel, I've had many men who have threatened to get physical because of the things that I've said. And like, I have one yard bird that I had to block because I would post up all of the crazy stuff I would get up on YouTube. And he said, that's why you always post it. It's like, these folks don't want to be, they're like roaches. You know what happened with roaches? You turn on the lights, they start running everywhere. And he was like, yeah, you know, you come down the floor, then you know, you, you see me in the airport. I was like, really? What I said offended you that much that you're provoked to violence? How mentally weak are you? And this is one of the things I've learned. Like, once again, th this is what can happen happen when you try to fix people. Let them be, enjoy their company, have them as a friend, separate. Because see, long as you sit back in the cut and chill with your drink, you good. But the minute that they notice that you're an alien from another planet, they're gonna try to kill you. This is what we, we, we've seen in the movies. Alien comes down from another planet, spaceship crash. Next thing you know, the army, the air force, everybody's after this for like, hey, I just crashed. I'm just trying to live my life. They're gonna try to kill you. They're gonna try to take you out because you're different. You're no longer normal. They're gonna try to check your ambition at the door. And this, this is just one of life's lessons that I wanna impart to you guys because understand what is happening in the world today. There is chaos. There is other social rearrangement. It's a big global reset. And there were people who will come out of this mess, multimillionaires, and there's some people who will come out of this mess, billionaires. If you focus your attention on people and serving people and creating products and services to help people, you're, you'll be fine. But if you just sit around and go, woe is me, woe is me. Man, it's so hard out there. Once again, I, I'm not trying to fix nobody. I'm just sitting there telling you what's gonna happen because there are many of you on this channel who are working hard, you're building businesses, you're gonna become successful and you're gonna go through this. I'm just here to tell you, it's gonna happen. It's just gonna happen. So for the exceptional people to be, this is getting towards the end of October. The price of the corporate toolbox goes up in November because I will be adding new training in November and I'll be adding new training in December. So there will not be any Black Friday special sales or nothing. There might be over at Hustlers Kung Fu. I might do that. Go below and get it because I will teach you how to set up your corporate entity. I will teach you how to make it tax efficient and I will teach you how to start a business from scratch. Whether you are a person who's never had a business or you are a seasoned business owner, I guarantee you the corporate toolbox will show you things that you've never seen before and help you improve your business and your life. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.